Welcome to Conversations. I'm Andy Millard. We're at Warwick Wells in the Bahamas and we're aboard Beacon One, a brand new 97 foot sailboat. If it looks homemade, that's because it is. But believe me, she's solid as a rock. You see, Beacon was built by my good friend Captain Bruce Dunham and his wife Sheila, along with a few friends. Bruce is a charter boat captain. He's been running group charters here in the Bahamas for over 35 years, mostly church groups, youth groups, scout troops. He outgrew his old boat, the Bahama Star, so he built this one, which can sleep up to 30. This year's season started before they could install the mast or even the final paint job, but don't worry, all that stuff will be taken care of when charter season ends this fall. Every year or two, a bunch of buddies and I pool our resources and spend a week roaming the Bahamas with Bruce. He's a fabulous character, friendly, outgoing, and always ready with a tall tale. But he's dead serious when it comes to the safety of his boat and her passengers. And although he comes from a good family, his childhood wasn't easy because Bruce had dyslexia, a learning disability that no one even had a name for at the time. I'm running now for over 37 years and loving, loving, loving it. You've always had this really uh, outgoing, exuberant personality. I love my job. Was that the case when you were a kid? Before I started school, yeah, but then after school I was crushed. I mean, just, just you know, just being made fun of and being picked on and uh, all this stuff like that. Just, it just wasn't a good scene. And uh, to be honest, when I came down here, I had very, very little confidence in me. And uh, it wasn't until being here, I got my confidence up, realized that I wasn't half as dumb as people made me think I was. You grew up in Pennsylvania. Correct, correct, Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And uh, came down here as a scout, and the captain asked me to stay the summer, and this is where I <laughs> ended up. He, he told me in the end of the summer, just stay, and I did. No one knew what dyslexia was back in the late 50s, early 60s, and that was just tough to deal with, reading and speech and communications. And, uh, and um, I just got tired of being picked on, and I wanted to do something different. And I had no idea what I was going to do, absolutely no idea what I was going to do. Now, it's interesting running a ship, um, using the controls of the ship, including the helm, you turn the wheel the complete opposite than a normal person. If you're driving a car, if you want to go to the right, you had to go to the left and vice versa. So naturally, I was able to drive the ship without a whole lot of problems. And that really blew the mind of the boat captain I was working for. Running boats were, was really natural. Um, working with people, I think I got those skills from uh, Boy Scouts and all like that. And I just always had, I had a fun time. I had a wild adventure, wild spirit, and I was pretty responsible even as a young guy. And I went down and I uh, never basically never came back home. Your parents approved or disapproved? Oh, definitely disapproved. But, I mean, I was too far away and there wasn't a whole lot they could have done back then. Now they you know, knew. How much, how, how much trouble you had in school? And uh, that, yeah, they knew. And it was tough the whole way around. And they were very frustrated because they didn't know what to do or where to go. And I definitely did not fit in to the, where I was. And it was just one of those perfect cases, right place, right time. Finally, the opportunity to go back home and be able to reconcile with them. And one of the first things is uh, my mother realized I could speak semi-normal, which is amazing. I was talking backwards. Uh, so that was a really exciting thing. And then they definitely noticed there was a confidence and a lot of peace there. You did say words, a lot of words differently than a lot of them. Definitely. And is that, uh, that's part of the dyslexia? Or you think? Definitely, yeah, yeah. And um, has that been, uh, that been a problem for you or not? No, I just had to slow down, take my time, and, and make sure people can understand me correctly. I think um, mistakes I made were good, they're learning curves. Uh, I understand some of the roads I took wasn't the easiest roads to walk. 
but that's all right. It formed the character who I am now, the male do what I did now. And um, I always been able to bounce back. I mean, I just learned. I think that's one neat thing about being in a special aid program. And when you failed at absolutely everything, you learn to get back up and dust yourself off and keep going. And I look back now, I mean, failure is a wonderful thing. And I concentrate on good, happy, good, positive thoughts. And I keep away from the negative stuff. The negative stuff will drag you down every time. And you can't be negative when you're out here. I gotta be honest, you look terrible. I mean, you got the, you got the <laughs> dirty shirts. I love this shirt. I've never seen you put on a shirt and not within you know, 20 or 25 minutes, it's just you're covered with dirt and stuff. <laughs> That's why I don't have nice clothes. <laughs> You're always in the engine room. You're always spilling something on you. This, this industry, you can't have nice clothes. At least this type of business. Well, take your sunglasses off so I can see your uh, crew up there. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Not put my eyes so I can see. <laughs> it takes a special kind of person to be married to Captain Bruce. True. It's tough conditions. I mean, it's, you know, mm -hmm. my wife and I, we live in a nice three bedroom house with, uh, you know, full bathrooms. You know, we got all the space. We got the garage. We got the big bedroom. We got the, you guys, you're right there in a little tiny, nothing bigger than a, a twin bed and two of you. Mm -hmm. the what, what's the saying? Paradise doesn't come without a price. Not like that. But it's a small price to pay to be out here. And to be honest, uh, we, Shul and I both were never into material things. If we were, we'd be running mega yachts and doing the big stuff. We, man, this stuff just never turned us on uh, like that. And so we're very, very simple-minded for us. Our happiness is when we're together. And our happiness is seeing people have a great time. I don't know. I mean. Another 20 years, 25 years, not this physically, I can't do it anymore. I definitely am not burnt out. I definitely still love what I'm doing. And um, now that's a health situation changes my mind somewhere. Now that if I know one day I'm going to get away from the helm. I mean, that's, that's just no give. I mean, everyone faces that day. Hey, I mean, it is what it is. And you run the course long, hard, and true. And when it's time to hang it up, you got to hang it up. <laughs> make my wife happy <laughs> and make other people happy and laugh and enjoy. What we have here is a failure to communicate. <laughs> what we have here is a failure to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> Thank you, Jackie Gleason. <laughs>